Look at this picture. There's something wrong here. Can you figure out what it is? Most wristwatches are made with the crown on the right side. Detective Harris has come to investigate a new case. A car crashed into a restaurant window, smashing it. There are two suspects, Julie and Douglas, but each of them claims it's the other person who did it. Can you figure out who's lying? It's Julie. The tire tracks on the ground belong to her car. At 9 a.m., Ethan got a call from his friend, an owner of a large business. The man said that a very important document had disappeared from his office. It had been on his desk the evening before, but now it was nowhere to be found. Ethan immediately went there to question his friend's employees. Soon, he had three suspects. Walter said he had spent the previous evening at the movies. Joan had dinner with her friends, and Zachary visited an art gallery. It didn't take Ethan long to understand who was lying. Do you know it too? It was Walter. His ticket isn't torn. It means he didn't enter the movie theater. Look at these prehistoric people. Who is from the future? It's one of the guys carrying water. He's holding a flashlight. Cheryl was reading a book, but she was careless and accidentally tore out pages 7, 8, 100, 101, 333, and 334. How many pages will she have to fix? Just four. 7 and 8, as well as 333 and 334, are different sides of one page. Olivia called the police. She told them someone had broken into her house, tied her up, and taken all her money and valuables. When the officers arrived, the entrance door was open, and Olivia was indeed tied to a chair. And still, the detectives didn't believe her story. Why? If the girl was tied, how did she manage to call the police? Gemma returned from Asia and brought a precious porcelain figurine. She organized a party and invited all her friends to tell them about her journey. They had a great time, but after her friends left, the woman realized the figurine had disappeared. Oh no! She called the police and showed them the photos she had taken at the party. One of the officers immediately realized who had stolen the figurine. Do you understand it too? It was Emma. She hid the figurine under her hat. Look at these four matchstick patterns. Which one is different from the rest? It's pattern number three. In all others, you can find two rectangles, but this one forms just one. One scientist needed volunteers for his experiments and two friends, William and Oliver, needed money. And since the scientists promised the experiments were going to be harmless, they agreed to participate. But in reality, the scientists planned to test the volunteers' reaction to different poisons. First, he trapped the guys in his lab. Then he separated them and locked them in different rooms. William and Oliver could only escape if they joined their efforts. Unfortunately, the scientist was extremely cautious. The guys didn't see each other, one of them could only use the bathroom only in the evening, and the other only in the morning. And still, in a couple of days, the guys managed to get away. How did they do it? They wrote messages to each other on the steamed up mirror in the bathroom with their fingers. They could read the messages later by breathing on the mirror. I shave, cut, and wash several times a day, but I still have more hair than you can imagine. Who am I?
I'm a barber. Adam was driving home late at night when he noticed he was about to run out of gas. He stopped at a gas station to fill his gas tank and buy some snacks. Inside, there was a cashier and one more customer dressed in black. When Adam came up to the employee to pay, she told him, $5.05. Adam paid, went outside, and called the police to report an emergency. Why did he do it? The cash register showed 1835, but the cashier said 505, which looks like SOS. Look at these emojis. How sharp is your vision? Can you spot the girl? Right you are. Here she is, on the left. Can you find all six Y's in this picture? Here they are. Good job. You take it and throw away its outside. Then you cook the inside. Then you eat the outside and throw away the inside. What is it? You've just eaten corn on the cob. Marcus woke up in a dark basement with just one candle burning on the table. He saw three doors in one of the walls and three keys lying on the table. How many attempts did the guy need to figure out the key for each door? He needed six attempts at the most, three of them for the first key, two attempts for the second key and two remaining doors, and just one attempt for the last key. But if Marcus is extremely lucky, he might just need three attempts. Look at these words. One of them is odd. Can you figure out which one? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. It's the word fourth. It should be spelled as fourth. Look at this picture attentively. What's wrong with it? There are no shadows here. Larry's mother asked the guy to do some grocery shopping. She gave him a shopping list and her bank card. But the woman knew her son was very absent-minded. That's why she gave Larry a small note in case he forgot the card's PIN number. When the guy was at the register, he realized he had indeed forgotten the pin. Larry pulled the note out of his pocket and immediately remembered the pin. Can you figure out what it was if the note had a fly, a cat, a person, and a snake drawn on it? The pin was 6420. Larry just had to count the number of legs of each creature. What is the missing number? It's 78. When read upside down, those numbers are 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, and 91. When someone robbed a bank in a small town on a snowy Monday, the police have four suspects. But all these people claim they've been at home all day long look at their homes and try to figure out who's lying. It's Rick. He returned home only recently. He parked his car near the house after the snow had already built up on his driveway. You need to move only two matchsticks to get two squares. How can you do it? That's how you can get two squares. Which of these clocks is the odd one out?
It's clock C. On its face, 13 has taken the place of 12. Thomas loved asking his friends to solve all kinds of funny riddles. If they answered correctly, he helped them with whatever they had problems with. One day, Daniel came to Thomas and asked for help with his math exam. He knew the rules, though. He had to solve one riddle first. What kind of running leads to walking? Thomas asked. Do you know the correct answer? Daniel said, running out of gas. And he was right. But helping your friend with exam preparation is a difficult task. That's why Thomas asked Daniel to solve one more riddle. A woman drove from Seattle to Los Angeles. It took her two days to get to her destination. That's when she discovered one of her tires was punctured. How did she manage to get to Los Angeles? Daniel cracked this riddle. Can you do the same? The punctured tire was the spare one. Detective Parkson was working on a tricky case. One day, he vanished. His colleagues found an encrypted note on his desk. The officers knew Parkson had three suspects, Milana, Susan, and Emily. Who had some information about the detective's disappearance? After some time, one of the police officers cracked the code. D plus 1 equals E, L plus 1 equals M, and so on. It was Emily who knew where the detective was. Aaron's enemies kept the guy in a tower that was 150 feet high. Aaron's friends managed to have a pair of scissors and a rope delivered to the man. Unfortunately, the rope was just 75 feet long. And still, Aaron managed to escape. It's known for sure that he cut the rope in the middle. But then what? The guy did cut the rope in the middle. Not across, but along. He tied the two parts of the rope together and got down to the ground. Mike pointed at a young woman in the street and said, She's the daughter of my grandfather's only son. Is the woman related to Mike? She's his sister. Detective Jackson was walking along the street when he heard some noise. He ran to see what had happened. It turned out that some man had grabbed an elderly lady's bag and sprinted away. The detective ran in the direction witnesses showed him. After he turned the corner, he saw three doors. He knocked on the first one. The apartment owner, Patrick, opened the door. The man told the detective he'd just returned from a long run. Another man, Jerry, opened the door. He said he'd been playing basketball behind the house. The third apartment belonged to Raymond, a musician. He had just finished composing a new piece of music. After talking to all these people, Detective Jackson understood who the thief was. Do you know it too? The thief is Jerry. He claimed he'd been playing basketball. But he was holding a football while talking to the detective. Tomas was washing a window on the 24th floor of a large office building. And suddenly, he heard someone screaming. The guy looked outside and saw a lady falling from the 30th floor. But in five minutes, the woman was standing on the ground, totally unharmed. How did she survive? Take a closer look at the sky. Yes, it's Superman. He saved the lady. Look at the picture. What's wrong here? Watermelons don't grow on palms. Twin brothers Stan and Ken had been working hard. They wanted to collect money for their mother's anniversary. Unfortunately, they didn't manage to save enough to buy her the car of her dreams. The brothers were very upset and agreed to go shopping the next day and pick another gift. At night, Ken couldn't fall asleep because he got a genius idea. While his twin was sleeping, 
Ken secretly took all their savings and headed to a casino. It was his lucky night. He tripled the sum. In the morning, Ken put all the money back in the box and fell asleep. Stan woke up, opened the box, and immediately realized that Ken had touched their savings. He didn't even need to count the money to understand that. How did Stan figure it out? In the box, there were large and small bills in the evening, but now there are only large ones. Kelly was traveling and discovered a beautiful abandoned castle. She entered the building and went downstairs. She was taking pictures when someone locked her inside the basement. Kelly looked around and saw three tunnels leading to freedom. In the first tunnel, a huge hungry monster was waiting for her. The second tunnel was full of snakes. And the third tunnel was filled with sleeping gas. In five minutes, Kelly was outside the castle, running to the nearest police station. How did she escape? She used her headband as a mask and ran away through the third door. Look at these animals attentively. What's wrong with this picture? This little guy on the left is listening to music. Two sisters went on a hike. Each of them took a box of matches. Nellie put her matches in a bag together with toothpaste and Shelly decided to store her matches in a bag with nail polish. While the sisters were walking through the forest, they accidentally fell into a huge puddle. When they got out of it, Shelly suggested making a fire to dry their clothes and cook something to eat. Both sisters took out their matches. Unfortunately, Nellie's matches were covered in toothpaste and Shelly's were in nail polish. Both girls left the matches to dry in the sun and left to collect some firewood. It started raining and all the matches got soaked. But 10 minutes later, the sisters still managed to make a fire and toast some marshmallows. Whose matches did they use? They used Shelly's matches. The nail polish dried and made them waterproof. If you don't keep it, it'll break. What is it? It's a promise. Susan was asked to describe her sons. She said, they're all redheads but three, all blondes but three, all brunettes but three, and all pink haired but three. How many sons did Susan have? The answer is four. One redhead, one pink haired, one brunette, and one blonde. Lisa was a famous top model. She was found unconscious in her dressing room during a photo shoot and taken to a hospital. Doctors said she had a severe allergic reaction. But when Lisa came to herself, she insisted she hadn't eaten anything all day. The model's manager was very concerned and interrogated everyone who had been around Lisa. The stylist said she had applied Lisa's makeup and, indeed, hadn't seen her eating anything. The cleaning lady said she had cleaned the dressing room with organic, non-allergenic products. Lisa's main rival, Nora, said she had been watching the shooting all day long. She hadn't noticed anything suspicious. Who's the culprit? It was the stylist. Lipstick was the only thing Lisa could have swallowed that day. Look at the pictures. Which of these people is a risk taker? The girl is risking less. She's sitting on the second floor and there's a pool below. The guy is risking more. The building he's sitting on is taller. You can see clouds and planes in the sky. What food can you never cheer up? A blueberry, because it's always blue. Ha ha, okay, let's move on. There are five lemons in a bowl. You take away three of them. How many lemons do you have now?
Well, you have the three lemons you took. King Gerald has a very beautiful daughter named Teresa. Four princes from different countries came to the kingdom, hoping to marry the girl. But the king decided to check how smart they were and organized a special contest. Teresa was in the center of a 200 by 200 foot room, and the princes were standing on small boxes in each corner of the room. The first prince to touch Teresa's hand would become her husband. But they weren't allowed to leave their places or use anything but their hands or wits. One of the princes figured out what to do immediately. He married the princess. What did he do? He just asked Teresa to come over and touched her hand. You can easily find me on Earth, Mars, Mercury, and even Jupiter. But you'll never find me on the Moon, Venus, or Pluto. What am I? I'm the letter R. Manager George received an anonymous text message. It said a robber had just entered the supermarket where he worked. George hurried into the hall and saw four pregnant women in the grocery section. The man looked at the ladies attentively, detected the thief, and called the police. How did he know? The woman on the right is the only one who doesn't have a shopping basket or cart. She's putting groceries inside her fake belly. Imagine that you're in a room with no windows and no doors. How can you get out? Eh, just stop imagining the room. Mrs. Victoria decided to give her grandson Rick an unusual gift for his 18th birthday. She called him into her room, showed the guy her safe, and handed him a corked bottle with a key inside. Honey, this is the key to my safe. You can keep all the money you find there if you manage to open it. But you must take the key out without removing the cork or breaking the bottle. Good luck. Rick accepted the challenge and started thinking about the puzzle. What would you do to get the key out? Push the cork into the bottle, and you'll easily get the key. Look at the picture. What's wrong here? The lady's reflection is holding the bag in the wrong hand. Amy had a crush on her neighbor. She went to the local witch, Sally, to ask for her help. Sally said she would make a purple love potion. On the night of the full moon, Sally took a sheet of paper with her granny's love potion recipe. She mixed all the ingredients except for the last one. Suddenly, a gust of wind threw the recipe into the fireplace. Sally was desperate. She didn't remember the name of the last ingredient, but she still knew for sure that the potion should be purple. Help Sally finish her work. She should add the blue ingredient. When you mix blue and red, they make purple. Harry and three other video bloggers traveled to a creepy canyon. They wanted to make a video about this mysterious place. They had been filming all day long. In the evening, they gathered around the fire, but it started to rain and everyone went to sleep in their tents. In the morning, Harry woke up, left his tent, and headed to the big bag with food to grab something for breakfast. That's when he discovered that all the food was gone. Harry got angry. He woke everyone up and interrogated the members of his team. Fred said he'd been looking at the starry sky all night. Jane said she'd been trying to catch a Wi-Fi signal to have a video chat with her boyfriend. And Sam said he'd been sleeping. Who is lying? It's Fred. It was raining at night and he couldn't see any stars through the clouds. Two students, Betty and Sarah, went for a walk after a very stressful test. They bought some coffee and candies and began to look for a picturesque spot for a picnic in the park. But suddenly, a guy in a mask grabbed Betty's bag and ran away. Sarah and Betty followed him. At one point, 
they saw a blind man sitting on a bench. He was wearing glasses and had a cane. The girls asked him if he'd seen a person in a mask carrying a female bag, but the man said he couldn't have seen anyone because he was blind. Sarah got very embarrassed, handed him a candy, and thanked him for his help. Then the girl took Betty aside and whispered that the blind man was the robber. They needed to call the police. Betty was very surprised. Why did Sarah decide the man was the robber? If the man was indeed blind, he wouldn't have seen the candy. Will's mother has three sons, Fred, Peter, and... Will. It's Will's mother, after all. Two mothers and two daughters spent all day shopping, but they only bought six dresses. This was enough for each of them to have two dresses. How is that possible? Only three people went shopping. A mother, her daughter, and her daughter's daughter. One of them is a daughter and a mother at the same time. And each of the three purchased two new dresses.